Okay, next on the chopping block for the 1981 Oldsmobile Cutlass with a 403 Turbo 200R4 and a semi-built 7.5 if that's possible. Is we're going to put a Turbo 200R4 um, stall converter in it. I think this is a 2800. Let's see if we can find it on the box somewhere. No, that's the. That's the part number. Pretty sure we did 2800 stall. But uh, the owner wants to see what it would do. We got a sticker. Is that a sticker? Yeah, a little sticker. Is that another sticker? Um, I think this is going to really wake up the car pretty good right now. This thing almost completely like stalls out. <laughs> like it's stalling so hard when you put it in gear is insane. So I'm gonna go ahead. I got a family function to deal with, but we're gonna put some of this uh, ATF fluid in it. I didn't buy the super nice stuff. This should be just fine. But also this transmission in theory shouldn't last too long behind this four over three. A um, couple of things going on with it. It shifts kind of early, so I think that's going to be our next hurdle. About time you're midway into a, a decent pull, it just shifts in a second. So that's no good. But now added a stall converter, it's probably going to shift almost immediately. So anyways, I'm going to top this off uh, the best I can. And when I get back from my family function, then hopefully we'll start putting it in. And me thinking I can just pour it on in there. Oh, this thing was an epic failure. I made an absolute mess. But one reason I'm doing it now is I might have a quarter of a quart. And it has to kind of soak all up in here. And so my plan was just to keep gradually adding in, um, put fluid in there as it keeps burping. And that way we don't have to have the system dry no longer than it has to. A lot of people uh, talk if this is needed or not. It's like filling up your oil filter. I prefer to have some fluid in it and uh, then none. They say actually these things should come with a little bit of fluid from the manufacturer. I do not know. Our brother just go ahead and put some in it and call it a day. So I'm going to keep kind of adding fluid as it burps. And uh, hopefully, like I said, when we get back, we'll be able to throw it in. Whew, let me get y'all caught up. So we got the stall converter in, as y'all seen. I, I probably should have done a comparison, but this thing is gigantic uh to pit um compared to the stall converter um by boss hog we are on the uh the downward slope the, the engine's lean back right now we have took the transmission out and now we're getting ready to put everything in let me walk around the car yep see so you can see the we got the cross member here we still got the drive shaft out. We'll get under the car. We got a mess. I, I am getting to a point in my life where I did not care to lay on the ground. I have nothing to prove. But anyways, we got, we're about to get ready to jack the transmission back up to put our transmission cross member in, which is going to go here. This is an adapter bar that I use. I'll show you all that. Uh, let me get to the front of the car. I'll show you all the stall converter I, I think i'm about to go to the hardware store and get some bolts this power steering is leaking pretty bad too it's uh making a mess you can see where it's dripping right there i don't know it has to be leaking from the, the snout i mean it don't make no sense the the hoses aren't leaking or anything so anyways, let's get under here. Scooch, scooch. So here's the stall converter. Uh, turns pretty easily. Um, we got the measure. So what you do is, we we'll have to line it up here. And we we'll have to write like this. And then we got to measure one eighth of an inch out. And that is how far the back of our right here the back of the torque converter needs to be spaced out from the pump if you didn't know the pump is right here this little tab these tabs sticking out that's your transmission pump and there's two slots on your transmission let's see if i can show you see those slots right there on the edge those actually go into your pump those 
uh, it, like in like like it is right now is straight metal on metal. So what you do is you want an eighth inch worth of play on those tabs, and the reason why is because there's a it's pretty much just some gears lashing together, and an eighth inch keeps the balance of the pump centered on those gears. But what happens if you don't if you just like bolted it down flat like we did like we you would want to do right now it offsets this uh these slots on those gears and the gears actually want to go back and it'll wear uh grooves in your pump that eighth of an inch actually just centers your torque converter on those gears and when it does that it rides evenly and won't wear out your pump It'll, it'll last for a little while, but you'll just be self-destructing yourself. So anyways, what I'm going to do is get a drill bit. And because you can see this is flat, I'm going to stick an eighth inch drill bit here. And I'm going to see how many washers it's going to take to fill that void. And the idea is we don't want, it's around eighth inch is perfect. Other than that, uh, let's see. We'll jack our transmission up, get our transmission level. And then that's when we'll go in through our cross member in and bolted up it was a kind of a pain because you can see we just got some makeshift exhaust uh this used to have a big block 454 so 455 is it's been osmobile true osmobile 455 and the headers were completely different they went like way back here uh with an extension i believe like a header extension so in a ways we had to use this temporary pipe to get the car going but that's stuff or down the road so we're going to get the transmission lifted back up uh, put our cross member back in and then drive shaft and then probably the last thing i'm going to do is this um man it's slippery yep so uh all right so that's kind of caught up i'm sorry i didn't really feel like filming I, I did a lot this morning and just didn't feel like pulling the camera out uh, showing every step this i didn't really want to do a how-to video we did take all this apart. I did put a different gasket on it. Um, I put a four hole gasket, which doesn't match up to this uh, carburetor adapter very well. I think there's gonna be um, efficiency lost in that, but that's just the way it's gonna be with this sp uh, spread bore factory intake with a holly on it. Uh, I tried to put a part supplied by the customer that should make this look pretty. And the problem is it, it hits the AC bracket. So that's a no-go. And it sat really low, like almost touching our intake. So that was a no-go too. And we got a, and with a, a spacer, it would have, it wouldn't have bolted on if the factory, uh, if we didn't have that spacer on it. One of the good things on this, I was able to bolt in our transmission tube. So it's now secured. I realized that I never hooked up the ground from because our batteries in the back as you can see no battery here so i didn't hook this up uh nor did i hook up another grounding strap for the chassis so that's uh two things that's been a good fix from noticing things being under the car and looking up from here also we broke our alternator belt we got it replaced so now we'll be we'll be charging again and uh, you can see the engines is rubbing here it's actually done pull this out of its uh, spot all right, no, enough uh, jibber-jabbering. Let's get to work. So we had to run to the parts store. We got some uh, bolts, two different sizes. Um, we got some washers for our spacer. And then we got some nylon locket nuts. And also we got our drill bit. And this drill bit is going to be what spaces everything out. And I'll show you all what we're about to do. So, I'm going to scoot it under here. So this is our gap, and what you do is you stick this drill bit under there, and then you add your washers to fill that gap. So it looks like it's probably gonna be two washers, I'm thinking. And uh, and then that's it, because this is your gap that you're pulling out the converter. Um, and that's all you need to keep your converter, uh, the pump where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna do two washers for each, there's three bolts. And we're going to see what length of bolt we need. And I'll show you all what we got when we get done. Okay, so this is kind of the setup we got. Everything's kind of loose. What we're going to do is we've got our two washers in there. And we should be able to get us uh, this in there like that. So it's a little bit on the top. 
tight side, I think. See that? We could probably make it work if we wanted to. That might be a one washer ordeal. You see that three eighths, that one eighths just quite doesn't fit with two washers. So we might just do one or we have to do a thinner washer. But that's the idea is uh, you should be able to put that one eighth drill bit in there to fit um, for that clearance off the back of your pump. All right, let me get everything bolted together. Okay, so that's our setup, one washer. See, that is the perfect length that I wanted. Uh, these are wash uh, bolts with a washer style head on it. Super happy with that setup. I got one more bolt to put on and we're ready to fire her up. Okay, all the bolts are in. The next step is we're gonna fire her up and shut it down immediately. Um, and that torque converter is gonna start filling up. Uh, it should have plenty of fluid in it. Yep. So we're we're there. I don't think I got anything disconnected. Let's check our distributor. I need to get the right plug for this. Uh, our ignition wire is hooked up, but our oh, it was about to fall off. Our tack wire is a no go. Anyways, let me. Uh, oh, I got it. Lucky me. Okay. So, should start a lot better now we got our grounds hooked up. I'm happy about that. Got alternator. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so, car is on. We're going to roll out the front jack stands. We'll know immediately right here uh, how the car idles down. It didn't really idle down at all, which is about what we thought would happen. But it's stalling a lot more than I would have thought. It moves pretty easy. So. Uh, the tire steering fluid is leaking and this bearing shot in here. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's a little bit better. All right, let's get this high idle off and I'm gonna get some power steering. All right, pretty happy with where we're at. And we have developed the leak. Look at this. Oh gosh, can't win. Anyways, we're gonna take it up the road and back. Let me put the air filter back on.